Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Lund University International Podcast. On this show, we aim to give you a taste of what international student life at Lund is like, as we speak to current students, alumni, teachers, and many more special guests. My name is Maria Lindblad, and I am an international marketing manager and recruitment manager here at Lund University. When we are recording this, we are in the middle of the application round, and we are getting a lot of questions on documents. So that is a topic we are going to dig into today. And I have some special guests uh, with us here today. Uh, before we get started, uh, there's just a few things I want to mention regarding the application. So in Atlund University and in Sweden, we have a national application system and we have two different sets of documents that all applicants need to consider when they are applying to an international master's program at Lund University. And first we have the official documents, which are documents like your transcripts, your diploma, your proof of English, and also your passport copy, so we can see who you are. And these are all submitted to the national organization, University of Missions in Sweden. And they are the same for all applicants applying to an international master's program. But in addition to that, students and applicants also need to consider the program specific documents. And this is something that we're going to dig into today. And the program specific documents are, as the name implies, indeed program specific. And at Lund University, we have 130 different master's programs, and all of these have different rules and instructions and different types of documents that they want. So if you are a prospective applicant, make sure that you check on our webpage exactly what your specific program requires so that you submit the correct documents when you apply. Uh, with us today, we have two representatives that are um, working with a couple of these programs, and we're going to talk about their program-specific documents, what to think about, what kind of mistakes you don't want to make, and so on. So let's uh, jump in and let our guests introduce themselves. Let's start with you, Frank. Thanks, Maria. Thanks so much for having me. Um, my name is Frank Schreier, and I work at the Graduate School at the Faculty of Social Sciences here. Um, the five programs that I work with are, um, maybe you're familiar with them, those who are applying, but um, the first one is the Master's in Development Studies, the second, the Master's in Global Studies, the third, the Master's in Social, Sci Social Studies of Gender, the fourth is the Master's Program in Society and Politics of the Contemporary Middle East, and the last one is the master's program in social scientific data analysis. So I'm really excited to talk to you about these programs today and about what we're looking for. That's a, that's a handful of programs. You that have to that is there. a handful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we get, a, we get a bunch of questions. I think it's so exciting to do this kind of thing because sure. hopefully this will help people when they're wondering what we're expecting and all of yeah. that stuff. This that's is, great. Yeah. Uh, and Amanda? Yes, so my name is Amanda L. and I'm the student coordinator of uh, the Master in Environmental Studies and Sustainability Science, mm -hmm. which is also known as LUMES. Um, and it's hosted by Luxus, which is Lund University Center for Sustainability Studies, which is part of the social science faculty as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, so I only have one program that I'm trying to manage. But, uh, but on the other <laughs> hand, you have a lot of program-specific documents yes, to manage. I do. So, uh, I think we're, we're gonna... so one program is enough. <laughs> exactly. And we are going to get into that. Uh, and, and I was saying... Uh, uh, here earlier that um, if, if they can apply to LUMAS, they can apply to any program oh. because your program has uh, probably the most program specific documents. Not that it's complicated, but there is a lot to, to keep in mind there. So I think that that's really good that we that we have you here to, to clarify those things. But let's start with uh, the statement of purpose because that is a document that so many of our programs require. Of course, again, our programs have different instructions, different templates, might be specific questions even I want you to answer, but let's just start at the very basics. We hear uh, words like statement of purpose, personal statement, motivation letter, letter of intent. It's just a little bit confusing for applicants. Um, Frank, could you perhaps just start with like, what is the statement of purpose? What do we even mean when we say that we want a statement of purpose? That's such a good question. And I was thinking while you were talking about all these different titles that we call this letter, there's one thing that, that ties them all together. And that's really intention. And it's it's your chance in the application 
to show your intention. And that sounds really simple, but if you think about it from our side, when we're re reading an application, we get a lot of official documents. We're reading transcripts and we're looking at grades and we're doing all this stuff. And while that is your personal work, it has a certain institutional feel to it. And when it comes to the, the intention letter, it's really where we get to see a student's or an applicant's personal touch to the program. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really the, at least in the case of the five programs I work with, the most personal document mm -hmm. um, that we get to read. So in that case, it's really special yeah. because we get to see that, that kind of yeah, that personal essence and that personal intention. Yeah. Motivation. What's behind the grades or behind the <clears throat> CV or exactly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. who's yeah. the individual who's applying here? Yeah, and why are they applying? Here? Why? Yeah. yeah, that that yeah. really that intention part, like you say, that yeah, um, that is what we want to see with that letter. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What would you say, Amanda, is sort of the the main thing that you as an applicant want to, would want to get across in your statement of purpose? Like, if you manage to do a really successful and awesome statement of purpose. What have you done right? Like, what, what is the intention that you should hope to get across? Uh, well, so from my side, when I'm looking at statement of purposes, I look for something unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that you should be, like, you don't need to come up with something unique. You should pick something from within mm -hmm. that is you, so to say. Mm -hmm. So you should really, when you sit down and you think about what should I write, you should go back to yourself and be like, okay, what is it that I want to communicate here? And for us, I mean, for the for the Lumis program, we have a specific template. So we have questions that we're asking you. So, I mean, that's a good, and that, and that is a tool to sort of help you to like, okay, so you don't need to start from nowhere. Like you read the template, of course, and then you look at the questions and then you'd be like, okay, what do I want to say here? What, how do I want to answer these questions based on my own experience and what I want to do later on in life? So, yeah. That. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> but, that's, that's And I would say, like, really don't think that you can do it in like 10 minutes. Like, mm. think it yeah. through and then go back to it later. Like, work, let it work yeah. a little bit. It's like, that's a really good point. What, what would you say, like, if you would estimate how long does it take to write a good statement of purpose? Like, <sighs> No, I think that's yeah. interesting because it's really like, as you were saying, Amanda, it got me thinking as well. Like, okay, can I just sit there and write it quickly? And or should I? Well, you can, but then I, I think you should always. And this is a thing. This is not. This is an advice that I usually give to students or applicants that, that contact me and ask uh, how they should think about this. And I say like, write something. I mean, think it through. Write some like a draft. Then go back to it. Sleep on it. Go back to it. Work on a little bit more. Ask someone that you. Um, well, not maybe. I mean, ask someone that you trust yeah. that would give you, like, not only just say, like, whoa, this is a good letter, like, ask someone that, you, that could potentially give you uh, constructive feedback mm -hmm. to read it and then get back to you mm -hmm. and then rework it. So, I mean, it's not like you have, when I say a week, it's not like 40 hours of full time no. work, but it's like a little bit here, then sleep on it, go back to it, yeah. ask someone. I mean, so it's not a thing that you do in, in a day, but yeah. I think that's really interesting yeah. advice. Very good. Totally. Yeah. yeah. What would you say, uh, Frank, is like, what pieces should a statement of purpose include? What, what, what is, what should I write about? Like, okay, mm -hmm. Amanda's saying write something unique, but should I write about myself? What mm -hmm. I'm interested in? Should I write about the program? Should I write about the country? Or like what, the university? What should I write in my statement of purpose? Mm -hmm. What's it all about? Great question. I was thinking about this a lot um, because we also get a lot of statements of yeah. purpose and we've seen lots of different kinds. Um, and when it comes to this specific thing, I'll say one practical tip, and that is to, if there are questions, answer them. Because yes. most yes. programs, yeah. have, we have questions. Um, so that would be the practical side. Make sure that that part's covered. But as you're covering those parts that are required, or they're not really required, but that we're asking mm -hmm. for, um, we want to see more than anything how the programs can help you. So we don't need a lot of, um, you don't have to focus on any th sort of prestige-based questions we you know we know how the university ranks and you know people sometimes in their statements give us a lot of compliments oh this program you know and all of these things but we're we're looking for the student or the applicant's um, yeah. personality to come through and we really want to see that the applicant has thought through how this individual program is going to serve them later mm -hmm. because ultimately that's why we're here is is to help the applicant and eventual student mm -hmm. um 
later in their career. So I would say, yeah, answer the questions for sure, but show us how this, this program's gonna help you. And I think that that's, that's really those letters that stick out to us were like, yeah, this is like, we wanna help this student you know, with this project they have in their life, mm -hmm. if our program can be of service to that, then then we really think we're doing something big here. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 We've got nothing to add to that. Like, yeah. But as Frank said, don't waste it. Because to Loomis, we have like a word limit. Yeah. Uh, so we have three specific questions and there's a word limit to each of those mm -hmm. questions. And I would say, don't waste your words on compliments. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like answer, answer the question, oh. that is. Uh, but I would say that we would still usually, we, we hear right. and we sometimes tell students that it's good to uh, show that you have done a little bit of research, that you know what the university is about or the program is about so that it's not just generic, this is what I want, but you're suggesting that maybe don't get into no, no, so much no. about the university or? I mean, so the second question in our statement of purpose yeah. is we're specifically asking you what in the Loomis curriculum has sparked your interest. Yeah. So, I mean, we do want to see that you have yeah. actually visited our website and yeah. done your homework. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you write something, I mean, something that's totally off. Yeah. That is where we will notice like, whoa, this person is like yeah. not... Some, I mean, the person must have visited our website because it's downloaded the form, so it's yeah. filling in, but it's not yeah. <laughs> done more than that. So yeah. yeah, and I think there's a really big difference between someone talking about the rankings of the university and you know that it's the the top school in Sweden and all of that stuff compared to someone who's read the yeah. the work of one of our teachers who are yes. teaching on the program yeah. and they're interested in their specific work. That mm -hmm. kind of stuff really sticks out to yes. us. We yeah. notice that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and it doesn't have to be any sort of compliment giving opportunity. We don't really need any, um, you know, it's not really based in prestige. It's based mm. on how will this curriculum, like you said, mm. um, serve the, the applicant. Yeah. I think that's okay. what we look for. I think uh, one thing that uh, is really helpful with your program specifically is that you are asking questions. So that would give you what you want, but also make it give the applicant a, a framework. But we also do have programs. I just want to say to listeners that just say, write the same purpose one page basically so if you're given more like an open-ended question like that or, or what are some other things that you think are important to get across Frank you talked about before like your your intention how the program can help you but are there other things as well that you should think about getting in there that you would can think of mm, this is such a good question yeah but I think I, I think this sort of like showing that you have knowledge about what the program is and what it's about it's helpful for any uh, statement of purpose. Yeah. I mean, even if they don't ask you to specifically write about that, it's a way to show that you actually have an interest in the program mm. uh, and that you've sort of known what is it that you have made an application to. Yeah, uh, that, that background research, knowing how the curriculum relates to a bigger goal you have in your life. Yes. Um, but if you have any experience that's related mm. that can stick out, you know, I'm thinking, especially with our data science program, our data analytics program, um, when students have um, some background that is already related to that, maybe they've done an internship, maybe they've taken a lot of quantitative courses, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff I know sticks out for our program with society and uh, politics of the contemporary Middle East. Mm -hmm. If you have experience with a language, that kind of stuff really yeah. sticks out to us. So if we didn't have questions already where we asked those things, yeah. that would be the kind of stuff we want to know. Yeah. yeah, and I actually had a related question there to that because we often get a lot of questions also, of course, just as you do to from applicants. Oh, what should I write in my statement of purpose? And in addition to what you've already mentioned, we tend to also tell them or give them the advice that try to write something about what you can contribute with as well. Yeah. Not just what the program can give you, but what can you give to the program and to the rest of the class and to contribute to the class. Is that something that you are also interested in? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's even a great outline, these three points we just talked about, starting with how the program, um, or just include these three elements, how the program can serve you a relevant background and then what you would contribute. Mm. What kind of student are you in the classroom? How do you relate to others in, in sort of collective or common work environments? Um, how, how will Loon University, you know, be affected by you being here? Will mm -hmm. you be engaged as a student in student life? Do you want to build something? Mm -hmm. um, I think these kinds of things are, those are some really great elements for mm -hmm. a letter, I would yeah. say. Yeah, I think like this to somehow connect it to your personal experience mm -hmm. and your personal beliefs or your personal like what, goals, like what you want to 
accomplish not just now but also after you've left like yeah 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 so i was thinking when you asked this um um no, I don't remember exactly what you asked, but I was had, I had a thought that I wanted to share anyway. Yeah. So I mean, in, in our letter, we ask uh, specifically, but this personal, like how to put a personal note to your uh, to your letter, and in the letter for Loomis, we specifically ask you what sustainability challenges intrigues you, and then I think it's easy to sort of pick, or that you feel like you might feel that you have to pick one of those like huge, uh, like climate change or loss of biodiversity, or whatever. Like these huge yeah. things are always in the news. But I would see, uh, or I would say that. When I read these letters, uh, I appreciate a lot more to see people like sort of connect uh, what they write to something that they've experienced themselves. Oh, and it could be like a small thing, a challenge, just an ability to challenge that's in their community that I, as a reader, have never thought about because I don't have experience from, let's say, Bolivia or yeah, <laughs> yeah. from whatever country that the applicant is. Yeah. So that I sort of those letters really stand out yeah. I would say like, that's interesting yeah, yeah that's a really good it's point it's a good way to sort of yeah. stand out and and you might think like oh but this is just t like who would care about this like yes I do care about this yeah. like when I read those letters I'd be like wow it's like I remember some of the letters that I've written uh, that I've read many years ago yeah. uh, from someone that actually wrote something or was very passionate about a specific thing that they put in the letter and mm. you could really see that okay this is coming from this person's uh, yeah. or that person's heart so Oh, that's so interesting. Because yeah. I would say, I mean, both of our, all, well, both, like all of your five programs, <laughs> my, my one program, yeah. I mean, they're all like uh, sort of world saving programs, if I can say that. Or yeah. I mean, the students that come here, they want to achieve something. Yeah, you want to take uh, up bigger yes. challenges. Yeah, something. you want to take up a bigger challenge and yeah. you want to sort of accomplish something or you want to make the world a better place, as we uh, say. Um, and then that requires a lot of like uh, stamina or like energy and yeah. motivation and uh, commitment. Yeah. So so that is a thing that we're looking for in the mm -hmm. letter. We want to mm -hmm. see that, okay, this person is someone that actually could handle this. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it is a big challenge, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how about, you've mentioned it a little bit here, but how much should you include in the statement of purpose, your career plans, your goals, like long-term after you've studied, what do you want to do with this degree? Is that something that you want to see as well? Like what if they've thought through sort of beyond the program? It yeah. sticks out. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, and that's, I mean, if, I, yeah. If they have a plan, then share it. But also, I mean, as based on my experience, I know that it's good to be a little bit humble there. Because if you say, this is what I want to do exactly, and I know when this will happen, I'll be like, okay, let's, let's bring you <laughs> let's here. See. <laughs> let's see. And then yeah. you will, uh, <laughs> yeah. things will change. Yeah, yeah. totally. But I mean, it's like, these, the people who apply, it's, it's good if you have a, an idea of what you want to do. And I think that that's something, yeah, definitely that sticks out. For, for us, it really goes back to this idea of how the program is going to serve your goals later. Mm -hmm. um, we really want this to be something that helps our students take their next steps in their mm -hmm. lives and in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I can't even get into all the examples of how impressed we are constantly about where mm -hmm. our students end up after. Yeah. I mean, they do amazing things. Mm -hmm. I think this world is a better place because of what they do. Yeah. You know? okay. And so if we can start to see that they have goals already, they don't have to be formulated, like you said, down to down to the month and the exact thing, mm -hmm. you know, um, but something that, yeah, we see that they have a direction mm -hmm. and they know how this program is going to help them get there. Yeah. Yeah. That sticks yeah. out to us. I would say, I mean, it's a way for us to actually see if this pro. I mean, we also make sort of an, um, um, I mean, we want to know, is this program, are we going to be able to deliver to the student what the student wants yeah. us to deliver? Oh, so yeah. if they write something that is totally off the the chart, when we would we read it and we'd be like, wow, okay, this we're not going to be able to do this for the student. Yeah. That is, yeah. Yeah, so it goes both ways. Yeah. It also serves you with some input. Exactly. Can we provide, like you yeah. said, can we meet the expectations yes. here? Because yeah. if not, maybe that's not the right yeah. fit. Yeah. And it's better to find out earlier yeah. <laughs> rather than Yeah, because I think, I mean, the, the yeah. letter itself can be really good. Yeah. But then when you get to certain things, you're like, okay, this is an excellent mm. application, mm. an excellent uh, motivation letter, but it's for another program. Yeah. It's not for this. A couple of more things. I, I think we, we will broaden it and talk about other documents as well. But one one thing uh, that I really wanted to, to connect to this is how much weight do you put into the statement of purpose? Because we know that students want to know this. How is the selection? How do I know like what my chances are and how, how important is the statement of purpose? Obviously, you will always need to consider their transcripts and their academic merits and so on. But for your particular programs, at least, how important is the statement of purpose? So when, for us, for, for the Loomis program, it's one third of the 
total like points or like yeah score that we give the at the moment i mean this might change but mm -hmm. this is the way it's been for the past i don't know 10 10 years at least yeah so, i mean it's very it's very important it's yeah. like one third of your uh total score like so it's definitely ranking. a document you want to get yes. in there yeah i mean if you don't yeah. if, if if this document is missing you're yeah. not gonna get, get admitted yeah it's like that is for sure like you can have the best grades yeah and you can have awesome uh, recommendation letters but if you don't have a motivation letter then yeah you're not gonna get into to Lumas. <laughs> yeah. It's such a good point. I think it's something that maybe some applicants um don't realize about the application process is you can be eligible for these programs mm. without having submitted the letter. Of course. The letter is this yeah. next step. Yeah. And it's like, do you get admitted then? Yeah. Because yeah, you can be eligible based on what just what you studied. Yeah. Um, but yes. like you're saying, like this is what brings it to the next level. Yeah. No, we do have a selection process, so it is, you know. Exactly, we get tons of applications, yeah. and we need a way of, of looking among them to see um, who sticks out the most. Mm. And I would say, I mean, one important thing is some people, they think like, okay, I got the best grades, so of course I'm going to be offered a place. Yeah. It's like, no, you're not going to be offered a place unless you also have a really good uh, recommendation letter. But if you do not have the best grades, but you have an awesome statement of purpose, then you might be admitted. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's like, in that sense the statement of purpose is actually more important than the, the grades. I mean, grades are, they do matter as well, yeah. but um, how do you say, a little weaker grades can be um, compensated compensated yeah. with like a, yeah. a really good motivation, like yeah. a statement of purpose. So, I mean, it's like, we don't only, we don't just need the people who are like the smart people. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like we need people who have the, as I mentioned before, like mm -hmm. the motivation, the energy and the, Creativity, yeah. perhaps. Creativity. Well. Yeah. And I mean, there are all other things that we look yeah. at. So. Yeah. Totally. It's funny how these kinds of things work. I know that having done this sort of admissions and, and review work over these years mm -hmm. has changed how I apply to things in my own life. Mm -hmm. Because I used to have this idea that applying to something was just showing merits and trying to fill these requirements or mm -hmm. being the best mm -hmm. on, on paper with calculated and those things. Mm -hmm. But when you're applying to these programs, and I'll say this to all the listeners here, um, we're looking for this, this idea that you fit. Yes. That, that yeah. the program fits you, that you fit the program. It's more holistic, yeah. It's yeah. way more holistic. Yeah. That's a good word for it. Yeah. It's not these sort of hard, I mean, there's that there's that hard formal part of it, mm -hmm. but there's also this qualitative it's part. human. Yeah. There's yeah. a human part of it. Yeah. That's a good way of yeah. putting it. Yeah. yeah. Because this is at master's level. We have to remember that. Yeah. And you already have yeah. a basic education and you have a bachelor degree and now you're moving on to the next yeah. step. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a huge part of your career and your future. Yeah. And so there is more personal touch to it. Absolutely. It matters yeah. much more who you are and how you can show that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the message here is pretty clear that this is a very important letter. And therefore, I want to, that brings me to, to the next question, which is... Uh, what are the mistakes you see? What mm. what should you not do <laughs> when mm. you are uh, preparing your statement of purpose? <laughs> and what are the risks here? Because yeah. now we've shown that this is a very important letter. Uh, what would you say, Frank? What's a common mistake that you see students do in their application with the, regards to the statement of purpose? Yeah, I thought about this um, on my way here. Mm. And um, I, I thought actually like about a few things, if it's okay if mm -hmm. I, I just, Go ahead. because I know this is the hard part, but this is real. There are real risks. And, you know, um, I would say the first thing is not submitting one at all. Yeah. So that, it, <laughs> yes. and that sounds so simple, but it happens all the time. Yeah. With so many applicants that, that don't submit one. So start by submitting one. Yeah. And start by answering the questions. Yeah. So those are two really simple things. You've already, you've already. You're already ahead of the game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we also want to see authenticity, like we yeah. said. So don't focus on pre our prestige or the like, university's mm -hmm. prestige. Focus on that on that fit, that that qualitative. If you fit into the program, um, and the last thing I'll say, and I maybe you agree with this one too, um, Amanda, is um, using the same letter for all the programs. Yeah. Because we this is a national application system, so we see all the things you yeah. apply to. Yeah. And we see all the app documents you yeah. upload for all the others. So if we see the same letter. We know not only you didn't answer the questions that we have because there's a very small chance they're going to be the same for, yeah. for all of them, yeah. but um, we don't want to see the same letter a bunch of times. No. And that leads into another point that that I'll I'll say right here also is um, having someone else write your letter for yeah. you. And that seems like how would we know because yeah. we've never met before. 
Um, but I know that in some parts of the world, people pay for um, yeah. their their letters to be written, or yeah. people pay for their whole application to be done. Yeah. And um, and, and we do notice those things. Yeah. It shows up. Yeah. And um, it's kind of a standard format. You see exactly how the letter has been crafted, exactly. and you know, and there are a lot of used. other details. Yeah. We don't have to get into them here, but those things come out on yeah. the application. Yeah. I don't think people notice. Do you think they notice, Amanda? <sighs> Well, I mean, as I mean, as, as they're trying, they're still trying. So yeah. I guess yeah. that they don't think that we will notice. Yeah, <laughs> but we do. Yeah, we do. We do. So, we do. Yeah. Yeah. And those blanket letters don't give us any of the insight no. we're looking for. No. no. Yeah. So, I mean, I would rather say, I mean, if you were, because I know, I mean, not everyone has English, including myself, as their first language. Yeah. So you might be worried like, oh, but how am I supposed to write this in a good and a perfect way? And it's like, I need yeah. to get into this fancy university and it's like, everything needs to be perfect. And I'm not able to express myself the way that I want to. And I'm not going to come through as I want to be seen or whatever. And then it's easy or maybe tempting to take that shortcut and have it like someone else to write it for you in a, in a perfect way. Mm. But don't do that. Like... It doesn't need to be the grammar, the language, those things. It's okay if they're not like 100% perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's better to I have rather, a spelling mistake. Yeah, it's better to have a spelling mistake than having someone letter. else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, I, mean, I mean, later on, you have to live up to what you've written in your letter. Yeah. So, I mean, if, and let's say, I mean, as you say, Frank, we have ways to detect that. But I mean, if, if by yeah. chance you would be admitted and you have had someone else written your letter, yeah. and then you show up here and we have like certain expectations, expectations on you, and hmm. it'd be like, wow, okay. Right. And also, we have to remember that the point is not to be accepted. The point is that you're going to do a two-year master's. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. it's not, I mean, the getting in, of course, is a hurdle, yeah. but that is not really yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, here. as I mentioned, yeah. as I like touched upon before, it's like it should also be, I mean, the statement purpose is a way for us for us to sort of see, is this program yeah. right for this person? And yeah. if you have had someone else written it, then that person might be right for it, but that person's not you. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Maybe so, it's right for that person who wrote the letter. <laughs> so, so it's like you show up here and it's like, whoa. <laughs> Where is your friend to reply? Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, so basically if we sum that up, it is uh, make sure you submit the program specific documents yes. in general, not just the yeah. statement of purpose, but everything the program has asked for. Mm. Make sure that you actually follow the instructions yes. and make sure that you write it yourself, you take some time and you give it a personal touch. Is that f a fair summary yeah. of that? That sums it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the, the recipe for a, a good letter. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. Amanda, I wanted just a final point here. We've, we've talked a lot. This is very interesting, and we could talk all day about the statement of purpose, I think. But I wanted to, since your program also requires recommendation letters, yeah. can you explain a little bit how these sort of balance each other and what your thought is when you sort of look at recommendation letters versus statement of purpose? You talked about it a little bit already, but just sort of how do they weigh and and do they ever contradict each other or do they support? How do you think about them? What, what is the applicant's idea of themselves and other people's idea of that person? Yeah, so I mean, so I, to answer the first question about how much they weigh, I would say I don't have a, an exact number for that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're less important than the statement of purpose, mm -hmm. obviously, and they're less important than the grades, mm -hmm. but they do matter. Yeah. But it could also be, I mean, and we say on our website, we say that you want where well, we want to see one professional and one academic. But we mm. also say, I mean, we do understand that people might have been away from university for a long time. So they yeah. might have difficulties getting it to academic. Then they can have two professionals instead mm. uh, or the other way around. If they have been you know, they haven't had any work experience, then they mm. can have two, two academic. And they do matter. And I mean, it's like it's like if you make claims about yourself uh, in your motivation, we want to sort of confirm them. Yeah. In the, so if you in your... Um, motivation letter or statement of purpose say that I'm very outgoing I love to work with others I'm like I'm active in all of this and this and that and then someone your reference person writes in your <laughs> like your uh writes the opposite I mean I'm not saying that's a negative thing because I yeah. mean there are introverts and extroverts but it's like there's then there's something something missing there like yeah. um. So, so you use them a little bit, if I'm interpreting you correctly here, you use them a little bit to sort of verify what's in the statement of purpose, if yes, you will. Yes, yeah, kind of, a little yeah. bit, yes. Yeah. yeah. And also to sort of see, because I mean, we want to have a mix of people in the classroom. As mm -hmm. Frank, I mean, it's like we, for Lumis, I don't know how it is for a graduate school program, but we have mixed students from all academic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So there will be like engineering students, there will be social science students. I mean, there's going to be, and from all over the world. So it's like a huge mix of people. Yeah. And we want to see that when we... Yeah, we try to sort of achieve that. And a way to try to achieve that is to read 
what others think about, think about you to sort of yeah. say, okay, we need a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And how yeah. does the people, how would this person be able to work in a group with different people or, and also, I mean, we're, we're a bit picky there. So we want the lecture to be submitted directly to us. The reason why, because I get a lot of questions about that. And the reason for, for that is that we want the reference person to be able to like fully honest yeah. in his or her day uh, recommendation. What they write should actually be yeah. something that they think and not just and I something think this that is they, quite common around the world yeah, now that yeah. you as a reference person submit the letters hidden yeah. from the applicant themselves yeah. so that you can exactly. give yeah. your honest. So therefore yeah. uh, my tip with regards to that is to ask people that actually know you to yeah. write the letters for you because that's another a, a quite frequently asked questions that I get it's like oh should I I have this one professor like this prestigious uh person yeah. that I can ask for recommendation or I have this PhD student that was my supervisor it's like which one should I but the one the professor is like that name is known within sustainability yeah so it's easy then to think that oh maybe that person would give me a sort of a shortcut into the, yeah. into the program I would say no it's like don't don't go that way unless the professor of course is your uh has been is someone that actually knows you uh yeah, yeah uh, super well then of course you should pick that one but otherwise pick the one that actually knows you and has been like working with you and and yeah because mm. that will also show i think because i mean we read like hundreds of recommendation letters so you yeah. can easily see if this is just a standardized one written by someone that wants to say something nice about you yeah but still uh, they basically just, stand yeah. aside they yeah. Don't yeah. Like, yeah. but they don't know so much about you yeah. or if it's written by someone it's like has worked with you for 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 an extended period it's like in this super uh really wants you to uh achieve whatever you want to achieve so mm. that 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 is uh yeah we can see that yeah very, very good tips there from amanda regarding the recommendation letters uh well as i said we we could talk about this all day but i think we we <laughs> are ready to to wrap up this uh episode but any final tips anything else that we haven't talked about that you would like to add before we wrap up for today I think one <clears throat> document that can be relevant, um, even though we don't ask for it explicitly, we don't require it, um, is if you're in your final year of studies, to include a registration certificate of what you're registered to. Mm -hmm. If it's not on the transcript already, mm -hmm. um, that lets us see what's coming up for you. Mm -hmm. And um, that helps us when we judge eligibility. Mm -hmm. So that's something that some people do naturally, something that people have asked, would this be relevant? And actually it is. It's mm -hmm. a, like really relevant so yeah. that can be something to think about it's not a requirement um mm -hmm. if we need to see that information to make a decision we'll ask for it so you know it's nothing to be stressed out about but if you have access to even just an unofficial mm -hmm. transcript of just like what you're registered to in your yeah. final term that's something that helps us yeah. yeah yeah and i would say i mean we have uh in addition to the statement of purpose and the recommendation letters we also have we have this template for an applicant summary as we call it mm -hmm. and the resume with a cv uh so in the applicant summary, there's this, this box where you can write whatever you want to write, mm -hmm. if you have anything extra that you want to say. And that use that box to explain. I mean, if you've had a, a, a rough period in your life during your academic, uh, like your studies, mm -hmm. and your grades in that semester weren't uh, as good as in other semesters, for example, then use that to explain like what happened to you, like why why do, does your transcript look the way it does? Or if, yeah. I mean, if you have, if it's taken you, I don't know, five years to finish your bachelor's uh, instead of three years I mean use that to explain it's it's not something that we're gonna look negatively upon I mean mm -hmm. it's to the contrary like if you are being honest about like okay this happened in my life and this is the reason why my grades are not as good during this period as they were thank you so much for such great insights here and helping uh, some of our future applicants uh, make a successful application Thank you so much for coming, Frank and Amanda. Thanks and for thank having you us. To all your listeners and uh, continue to come back for new interesting topics on the Lund University International Podcast. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Lund University International Podcast. If you're interested in learning more about Lund University, you can go to our website, lunduniversity.lu.se. You can also follow us on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and you can chat with current students on Unibuddy. Don't forget to subscribe, and we look forward to bringing you a new episode very soon.